Our quote for today is, I found $20 in a parking lot, and I thought to myself, what would Jesus do? So I turned it into wine. <laughs> I like the story of Patty O'Flynn, who was coming back through customs at Dublin International Airport, carrying a large bottle. What do you have there? Asked the suspicious TSA officer. It's holy water from Lourdes. I'm bringing it back home with me for my wife, Patty said. The officer took the bottle and tried some of it. He shouted, why, this is Irish whiskey. Patty said, glory be to God, it's a miracle. He's done it again. <laughs> Today's gospel is the wedding feast of Cana, where Jesus revealed his divinity to his apostles. This is the third Sunday in the row where we have a, an epiphany, a manifestation, a revelation of the divinity of Christ. Two weeks ago, Jesus revealed his divinity as a baby to the Magi, who represented all of the Gentiles that come to adore Christ. Then last Sunday, we had the baptism of the Lord, where the Lord revealed his divinity to John the Baptist and to the crowd when the Holy Spirit came down upon him and God the Father spoke and said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And today, it's this third Sunday in a row, Jesus revealing his divinity to his apostles at Our Lady's request. This great miracle, Jesus' first sign. John has seven miracles in his gospel. He calls them the seven signs because signs point to something else. This great miracle will point to a greater sign, which is the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. But we see that it occurred at Cana in Galilee, which is just four miles from Nazareth. That's why our Blessed Mother must have known this family quite well, because Mary was invited to the wedding, you know, to the wedding and to the wedding reception. And because Mary was invited, it says Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding as well. If you had the opportunity to go to the Holy Lamb, there's a beautiful church built over the spot where this miracle took place. And when I had the privilege of taking pilgrims there, we would always have our married couples renew their wedding vows at this church. Just as we have them renew their baptismal vows at the Jordan River, we have them renew their wedding vows at the Church of Cana. And it says Our Lady was there. Jesus also showed up with his apostles. And the very next line it says, and the wine ran out. Bishop Sheen says, you have to connect those two things. The apostle showed up and the wine ran out. He says that's not accidental. So the Blessed Mother discovers this before anyone else, even before the chief steward of the feast. That was his job, to take care of the wine. The head steward did not even realize the wine ran out, nor did the bride or groom, nor did the parents of the bride or groom, uh, nor did any of the servants, especially the, the, the bridegroom who was responsible for providing the wine, even the bridegroom, that was his main responsibility, was to provide the wine. The bridegroom did not even realize that the wine ran out. But this gospel shows us who the true bridegroom is, and that is Jesus Christ. As we heard in our first reading, God loves his people so much, he enters into a covenant relationship, a marriage covenant relationship with his people. And so Jesus, who is truly God and truly man, has come to be the bridegroom of the church, the bridegroom of our souls. So Our Lady discovers this first. Our Lady always knows our needs before we do. And so she goes to Jesus as an intercessor, as a mediatrix of grace, and goes to Jesus. And notice what she says. A simple statement, they have no wine. She doesn't ask Jesus to do anything. She just presents Jesus with the situation. Maybe like a wife who might say, Honey, today is, is trash day, right? That's just a statement. But you know, what, you know what it means, right? You mean get out there and take out the trash. So Mary says they have no wine. This was a disaster for this young couple. Would it be such an embarrassment? See, our wedding receptions usually last between four hours and six hours. That's how long you rent the hall for or the wedding you know, reception venue. 
Their wedding's receptions lasted seven days to ten days, seven to ten days. And for the wine to run out in wine country, that was a disaster. That would be the end of the celebration. People would leave and go home. And so Mary presents the situation to the Lord, which also helps us to give us an insight on how we should pray as well. We should present our problems to the Lord and say, Lord, you know, this is the situation. We know you will take care of it. And the Lord's response is sort of hard to understand. First, he calls her woman. In our society today, we wouldn't address someone like that. But back in those days, it was a title of respect and honor, like the word lady. And so he was referred to her not as mother, but as woman, because this title woman was a messianic title of the mother of the Messiah, the mother of the Redeemer. It was used in the book of Genesis when it said, God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and her seed would crush the head of the serpent. So the mother of the Messiah would be called the woman, the woman of Genesis. At the foot of the cross, Jesus said, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother showing that she is the mother of the Redeemer and all the redeemed. And then in the book of Revelation, it says that John sees the vision of the woman clothed with the sun and on her head a crown of 12 stars. This is Mary, the woman of Genesis, the woman at the foot of the cross and the woman of the book of Revelation. It says, woman, how does your concern affect me? Not a very good translation. The actual Greek says, woman, what is this to me and to thee? What is it to us? How does their concern affect us, you and me? That's the better translation. My hour has not yet come. So Jesus was not planning on doing his first miracle. He was not planning on beginning his public ministry. See, once Jesus worked his first miracle, he would be heading to the cross and to his death, to his passion, and of course to his resurrection. But he says, my hour has not yet come. The hour always refers to Jesus's passion, death, and resurrection. So he says, my hour has not yet come. Mary says, notice she doesn't say anything more to the Lord. She completely respects his decision. And Our Lady turns to the servers and says the last recorded words of Mary in scripture. Mary spoke seven times in the New Testament. This last time she says, do whatever he tells you. The Holy Spirit wanted those words as the last words from the Blessed Mother, because that's what Our Lady always wants each one of us to do, to do whatever Jesus tells us to do in our own life, to love one another, to love the Lord, and to keep his commandments. So do whatever he tells you. Our Lady's last words of advice to the whole world. And, and so Mary completely leaves it in Jesus' hands. So Jesus tells the stewards to take those six huge stone jars that were used for ceremonial washings. When people would travel, their feet would be dirty, so they would take some of the water and pour it over the feet of the traveler. They would use it to wash their hands up to their elbows for 20 seconds, right? And then they would have these ceremonial washings. And then Jesus said, fill the jars with water. Notice he does not create the wine out of nothing. He wants our human cooperation. He wants us to put into um, his miracles our own effort. For example, at multiplication of the loaves and fish, he didn't create the loaves and fish out of nothing. He, they found a young boy who had five loaves and two fish and then he multiplied that. When he raised Lazarus from the dead, he asked the people to roll away the stone. See, our human cooperation is necessary for God's miracles. We have to put in what we're supposed to put in. And they obeyed him perfectly. They filled the jars to the brim, each one holding up to 30 gallons. So this is 180 gallons. Next time you go to the store, pick up a gallon of milk, and then keep filling up the cart until you have 180 gallons of milk. You couldn't even get it home in many cars. It would be fill up a huge truck. It's actually 1,000 bottles of wine 
which is what the Lord did here, showing that he is truly the Messiah, because the Messiah would bring in abundance. So they filled the jars with water, they filled them to the brim, and Jesus then tells them to take some out and give it to the head waiter. I'm sure these servants were trembling, just taking this water to the head waiter, but they did it with great courage, and they could have lost their jobs trying to you know, take this water to the head waiter to taste, and yet, it had been turned into wine, and not cheap wine, not wine from a box, right? This was good stuff. This was the greatest wine that this steward probably had ever tasted. And he realized that he didn't know where it came from, so he goes to the bridegroom, whose responsibility it was for the wine, but the bridegroom is clueless. He has no idea what's going on, but the true bridegroom is Jesus. And he says, to the bridegroom, people serve the best wine first when people are more discriminating, but after a few days into the party, you bring out the cheaper stuff, but you have kept the best wine until now. So this was Jesus's first miracle, and it says his disciples believed in him. So what we should take from this gospel, some of the things to apply to our life, invite Jesus into your life, into your marriage, into your home, Jesus can work miracles. He is the Lord. He is God. He's a great person to invite to a wedding party, right? To a wedding feast. And notice Mary's intercession, that yes, we can go to Jesus directly. We do this all the time. But let's go with Mary, our perfect prayer partner. Let's go with his mother and our mother. Take Mary with you when you need something from the Lord, because Mary knows our needs before we do. And just as that young couple was clueless that they had run out of wine, so perhaps in our own life, we're not even aware of what we need. But our blessed mother, our good mother, knows what we need even before we do. So for example, what are you running out of? Are you running out of patience with the kids or the grandkids? Are you running out of grace? Are you running out of faith? Many people, their faith is being affected by things. Are you losing your faith? Say to Mary, Mary, help me. Go to Jesus for me and say, increase my faith. Are you running out of hope? Many people in the world today are losing hope. They're running out of hope. Go to Mary and have Mary go to Jesus with us and for us and say, they need more hope. Don't let them fall into discouragement or despair. Maybe you need more love. Maybe you need more love for your spouse. Maybe you're running out of love for your spouse or a relative or a family member. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you're running out of money. Maybe you're running out of, of good health. Whatever your situation is, go to Mary and ask her to go with you to Jesus. And Jesus can work these great miracles in your life because Jesus is the answer to all of life's problems. Jesus is the great miracle worker at the wedding feast of Cana. If you've not watched The Chosen yet, watch The Chosen episode about the wedding feast. It is a wonderful episode, and realize that the wedding feast is the sign of what's about to happen in a few moments, where water and wine don't be, wine, the water doesn't become wine, the wine becomes the blood of Christ. And that is the greatest miracle that takes place at every Catholic Mass when we are about to receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. It fulfilled the, the sign of the wedding feast of Cana. Christ, the true bridegroom of our souls, is about to become one with us. We are his beloved. Jesus wants us to enter into this covenant really marital relationship with him in Holy Communion. So in a few moments, our bridegroom, Jesus Christ, will enter our souls. We are the bride of Christ, the church. Each one of us is the bride of Christ, and we become one with him when we receive him in Holy Communion.